In this video, I'll explain how to make the LED Illuminator module. This allows greater control over illumination compared to the passive mirror of the basic foundation scope. The illuminator is always used with a collimator lens system of some kind. So, I'll show you how to build the 2x23mm lower collector collimator. First, I'll give you an overview of the components of the Puma LED illumination system. Puma was designed to use a single illumination module for all types of microscopy. By swapping in and out a few standard parts, you can use the same module in transillumination, epi-illumination, fluorescence, polarization, etc. The light comes from an energy-efficient generic 1 watt surface mount LED bulb that has an approximate point source illuminating area. This is near the theoretical optimum for microscope illumination because it is not spread out in a pattern as with filament bulbs, gas mantles or a candle flame. Furthermore, these LEDs are available in a wide variety of wavelengths including various types of white. For most non-fluorescence work, I use the daylight white version, which has a color temperature of 6500 to 7000 Kelvin and a brightness rating of 100 to 110 lumens. The single color LEDs are good for specialist applications, such as fluorescence microscopy with various fluorophores. Because all the bulbs are the same form factor and energy rating, you can easily just exchange the bulb in the same Puma lamp housing module to switch from, say, white light illumination to fluorescence microscopy. Unlike an incandescent bulb, these LEDs have minimal internal resistance, so you cannot just hook them up directly to a battery or power supply because this will cause them to blow instantly. For that reason, you must always use a suitable current limited power supply. Using a simple resistor in series with a battery will suffice, but it is not very practical or energy efficient. Your battery won't last long and if using an external power adapter you will waste a lot of the energy as heat in the resistor. For this reason the Puma system uses a generic current regulated power module. The same power module is used in Puma's two portable battery-operated control units, the advanced Puma Control Console and the simple Puma Light. This regulator limits the current to a maximum safe level when set correctly, and also to a standard voltage, 5 volts, so gives predictable and reproducible brightness regardless of fluctuations in the input power supply whether that's a battery or external power adapter. In this video, I'll be using the Puma Light control unit, and a detailed tutorial on how to build it is available on the Puma GitHub page, a link to which is provided in the video description. So, we have our LED and we have a suitable power supply, but in order for these to be useful, they must be connected to each other. The Puma standard specifies a simple LED connector pad and cable combo to do just that. Details of how to build this connector pad are also given on the GitHub page. One of the design features worth noting here is that this connector is a simple pressure fit to the LED, meaning that there is no soldering required of the LED to the pad. This makes it easy to simply swap in and swap out LED bulbs for any reason at any time. In order to hold the LED bulb against the connector pad and keep everything together in a unit that can be easily coupled to the microscope, Puma specifies a 3D printed LED lamp housing and I'll show you how to construct that shortly. The lamp housing is designed to accept a spacer and various filters to allow adjustment of the light intensity, diffusion and wavelengths, as well as to adjust the spacing of the LED from the lower collector lenses to adjust the beam collimation to be optimal for different illumination modes. 
as will be discussed later. Finally, the LED illuminator is always used with some kind of collector lens assembly, with only one exception, the 2x23mm lower collector system is used, and I will show you how to construct that in this video. The exception to this rule is the LPC, or Low Power Collector, which is only used in the very special case where full field curler illumination using a times 4 objective is required. This is something that even expensive professional microscopes cannot do, but Puma can, and this will be described in a separate tutorial on curler illumination. Before I move on to the next part of this video, I would ask that if you like these Puma videos, please take a second to support the project by clicking on the big red subscribe button and give the video a thumbs up. If you have social media accounts, also please share these videos on them using the YouTube share button. Ok, now back to the rest of this video. These are the parts and some of the tools you'll need to build the LED lamp housing and 2x23mm collector lens. Details are provided in the video description. In this demo, I'll be building a 450nm blue light illuminator, suitable for fluorescein fluorescence microscopy, but the method is the same for any colour LED including daylight white. I chose this example because it allows me to show you the method for adding an excitation bandpass filter, which is not needed for white light. This demo assumes you have already made the LED connector pad, as shown in the detailed instructions on the Puma GitHub page, and have a suitable power supply available for testing such as the Puma Light controller, the construction of which is also described on the GitHub page. The first thing to do is ensure that your printed parts are cleared of any 3D printing imperfections, and that the threaded parts thread into and onto each other well and without hindrance. This may take some scraping or clearing of the threads with a knife and a wire brush, and repetitive training of one thread onto another. In my experience, the 3D printed seams are the regions where most resistance occurs, so scraping these down may be a good place to start if you encounter problems. Don't sand or otherwise smooth the inner aspect of the LC receptacle or the outer aspect of the LC collars, because we use the friction of the interlocking 3D printed layer lines to adhere these together during construction, so only remove any obvious blebs or loose plastic threads from these parts. Now insert the LED into the back of the LED holder. These LED bulbs have cropped sides, and they simply drop into the similarly shaped hole in the back of the body of the LED holder. However, there are a couple of points to note at this stage. First is to ensure that you insert the bulb with the correct polarity orientation. The polarity of the LED is stamped onto its connector lugs, but only on the front surface, so this is not visible from behind and is hard to see at the best of times. In addition, there is a slot cut into the negative terminal here. And this is visible from both sides, so I find that most helpful. Ensure that this is indeed the negative terminal by comparing it to the stamped surface, because some LEDs have a T-shaped slot cut into the positive terminal in the same position instead. Once you have identified the polarity of the terminals, insert the bulb with the positive lug of the bulb facing the right lower M2 screw hole in the back of the LED holder, when viewed from the back with the apical M2 screw hole pointing upwards. Another point to note is that because the connection to the LED is a pressure fit, you can't just put the LED in like this, because there is an air gap between the LED lugs and the surface of the LED holder. Over time, pressure on the lugs will bend them down, and so the connection may become unreliable. For this reason, the special 3D printed washer must be inserted over the hole first, and then insert the LED, observing the correct polarity. The washer will prevent the LED connector lugs from being bent down, and so ensure a reliable connection.
Next, fit the LED connector pad into the recess in the back cover plate of the lamp housing, taking care to ensure that the cable exiting the pad passes between these two posts in the cover. The pad may tend to rise up while doing this, but you can just push it down with your finger till the cover is fitted on the LED holder. Now put a raised blob of thermal transfer compound on the back of the LED. Make sure it is raised so that it makes contact with the heatsink foil on the connector pad because these tinned connector areas are raised above the heatsink foil. So when they make pressure contact with the lugs of the LED, there will be a gap between the heatsink area of the LED and the heatsink foil of the connector pad and you want the heatsink compound to bridge that gap. Now fix the back cover onto the LED holder. First put the M2 screws in their holes in the cover. Now hold the cover in position, lining up the screws with their holes. and thread the M2 screws into their plastic thread holes in the LED holder. It is best to screw them in only a little distance each and then continue to screw them in a little more each till no gap is seen between these posts and the LED holder casing. All the while taking care to ensure that the cable of the connector pad stays between the two posts in the back cover and is held firm. Now the basic lamp housing assembly is complete. At this point you should test the illuminator by connecting it to a suitable current limited power supply. With the Puma power units you should always set the brightness rheostat to a non-maximum position before switching on to ensure that some additional resistance is in the circuit for additional safety in case there is a problem with the power regulator board. We now turn our attention to the 5mm spacer. The spacer is an optional module which sets a predefined gap between the LED and the lower collector lenses to adjust the collimation of the beam. Without the spacer, the collimation will be suitable for objectives of times 10 magnification and below when used with the curler illuminator. However, for higher magnification objectives, the spacer must be put in place to achieve the most accurate even illumination. This adjustment is required because the lenses used in the collimator are not perfect and so cannot give an optimum parallel beam for objectives of all numerical apertures. In addition to high magnification curler illumination, the spacer is also required in all cases where the illuminator is used for polarization microscopy and epi-illumination microscopy, including epifluorescence. In regards to fluorescence, note that the spacer has a specially designed flexible rim receptacle well in its top surface for accepting a filter 14 mm in diameter by up to 1 mm thick. In this case, we'll be using a 450 nm narrow band pass excitation filter. This is needed because the blue LED, despite having a stated output wavelength range of 460 to 465 nm, also has a significant amount of yellow-green residual emission, which gets through the 510 nanometer emission filter used 
for fluorescein fluorescence microscopy. This results in high background brightness, which makes this LED unsuitable to detect faint fluorescent signals if used without a filter. Note that the excitation filter is coated on one surface only with its special dichroic coating. You can tell which is the coated surface by looking at the filter at an angle. When you look from the uncoated surface, you will see right through to the other surface and you can tell this because you can see the edge of the filter through the surface. When you look from the other surface, you can't see through to the edge. So this is the coated surface. We want to insert the filter with the coated surface facing inwards towards the LED bulb. This is to protect the coated surface from dust and scratches when it is in place. You fit the filter by pressing it into the receptacle using a lens paper barrier between the filter and your fingers to prevent getting fingerprints and scratches on the surface. Take care not to crack the filter. If it feels too tight a fit, you can always bend the flexible walls of the filter holder back a bit and try again. Once the excitation filter is fitted, keep the spacer in the lamp housing and insert a protective screw cap to the lamp housing to protect from dust and scratches till we come to use it. Alternatively, the lower collector collimator can be fitted as a protective mechanism. I'll now show you how to construct the 2x23mm lower collector lens assembly. Insert a 23mm lens, convex side first, into the LC receptacle. Ensure it goes all the way down and its rim lies flat against the lip of the LC receptacle. Ensure the inner surface of this lens is free of any dust or fingerprints, then insert the 7mm collar into the LC receptacle with the non-lipped side going in first to meet the lens already in the tube. Next, ensure the convex surface of the second 23mm lens is clean and insert it into the LC receptacle until it is stopped by the 7mm collar. Finally, insert the 2mm collar into the LC receptacle with the lip of the 2mm collar facing into the LC receptacle to make contact with the surface of the second 23mm lens. If everything is inserted fully, correctly and level, the 2mm collar non-lipped end should be flush with the end of the LC receptacle and your lower collector assembly is now complete. This shallow depression at the back of the collector may be used to place one or more 18mm diameter membrane filters and diffusers as required. A diffuser can be useful when doing Fourier filtration at the condenser's aperture for reasons I'll discuss in another tutorial. Neutral density filters can also be placed here if the dimmest setting of the lamp controller potentiometer is still too bright for your application. However, if you constantly need a lower light level, it would be better to achieve this by turning down the current regulator potentiometer in the controller. This will be more energy efficient and give you longer battery life for portable use. ND filters are useful if you only need to attenuate the light for a temporary application, because if you use the current regulator control for this, then you will need to monitor the current when turning it back up to avoid overdriving the lamp and so cause it to burn out much sooner than its normal life expectancy. The lower collector screws into the lamp housing such that the convex protruding aspect of the lens 
faces outwards. The LC adjust collar allows the lower collector lamp combo to articulate to the various trans and epi illumination setups in a tri screw adjustment receptacle, which allows for centration and angle adjustment. Screw the collar over the protruding part of the lower collector till it is tight up against the lamp housing. Note that this collar is asymmetrical, with a longer stretch of straight tube on one side of the indentation and a very short segment on the other side. The nominally correct orientation for use with curler illumination is to fit the collar with the longer stretch of the flat tubing facing the lamp housing. But if you want to reduce the distance from the lamp collector combo from the tri screw adjustment receptacle for any reason, you could reverse this. Your LED illuminator is now complete and ready to fit to the various illumination setups of the Puma microscope. These will be the subject of separate tutorials. Please remember to like, comment and share this video to support the Puma open source microscopy project. Thanks for watching.